Welcome to this episode of Real Chemistry. I'm Dr. Morris, and today we're going to be talking about combustion reactions. Combustion reactions are the chemical reaction responsible for what we call in everyday life burning. So you see this fire down here, and you see this uh, gas stove on fire, and those are both burning reactions. One's burning wood, one's burning natural gas. They both release a bunch of heat, obviously, and they release some other stuff too. And what we're going to do in this video is talk about how you can predict what the products of these combustion reactions would be. First of all, let's give a little more technical definition of what a combustion reaction is. A combustion reaction is any time we combine something with molecular oxygen. So below down here, you actually see what is the combustion of methane. That is what we saw on the burning stove. And what we do is we take methane, CH4, and we combine it with molecular oxygen, that is O2, and we're always gonna get out CO2 and water. And this by far is the most important thing to remember about combustion reactions. When you burn a hydrocarbon, that is something composed of just hydrogen and carbon. You always get out CO2 and water. You burn gasoline in your car, that's a hydrocarbon, you get out CO2 and water. That's what's coming out of your tailpipe. That's why you might've seen your tailpipe drip water sometimes. It's also why running your car engine produces a greenhouse gas, right? CO2, that's the greenhouse gas we care about that is uh, causing the atmosphere to slowly warm, right? So CO2 and water are the main products of most combustion reactions. But if we burn things besides just hydrocarbons, that is we burn things that contain things other than hydrogen and carbon, we get different products. Let's talk about what those products would be. So whenever we burn hydrogen, anything containing hydrogen, we get water. Whenever we burn anything containing carbon, we get CO2. Whenever we burn anything containing sulfur, we get sulfur dioxide, SO2. Whenever we burn a metal, sounds weird, but you can burn a metal. Uh, you might've done this in lab where you burn a strip of magnesium and it glows bright white. That's making magnesium oxide. Uh, and that's a combustion reaction. You're combining it with molecular oxygen. So let's go through predicting the products then of these few uh, reactions I have written down below really quickly. And they're just gonna be the unbalanced products. The final step when you wanna predict the products of a combustion reaction is to balance the reaction. We're gonna skip that step here just to give you an idea of how to use this chart. So if my reactant contains hydrogen, I know I get H2O. Well, down here in my first example, I have methane, CH4, and it contains hydrogen. So that tells me one of my products is gonna be H2O and it's gonna be a gas. Unless you're dealing with a metal oxide, the products of your combustion reactions will be gases because it's creating a lot of heat, so your water is gonna be in the gas state typically. Now, if my reactant contains carbon, I get CO2. So here's my reactant with carbon. So I'm gonna get CO2. So methane, as we said before, when you combine it with molecular oxygen, gives you H2O and CO2. Notice that in this chart, all we're doing is taking oxygen, this chart, this chart, I suppose that's how normal people would say it. Uh, when you take molecular oxygen, you combine it with whatever elements over there, you just get out some compound with oxygen. And for hydrogen, the most stable one's water, H2O. And for carbon, the most stable one's CO2. And for sulfur, the most stable one's SO2. And for your metal oxide, the most stable one is gonna be whatever metal oxide forms. We'll talk about that more in a second. So CH4S, right? Here we got carbon, that gives us CO2. We got hydrogen. That gives us once again H2, but we also have sulfur, so we're also gonna get out SO2. So we have three products from this reaction because there's three separate elements we're combining with molecular oxygen. We get out H2O, gas, plus CO2, gas, plus SO2, gas. All right, last uh, example here. Again, we need to go through and balance those reactions before this will be complete but I'm just going through quickly to show you how to use the chart. Last sort of uh, quick example here is magnesium combining with oxygen, the example I missed before, or mentioned before. So here we're gonna get magnesium and oxygen, a metal oxide. What we need to do is make sure that the charges are balanced there, right? So know how to predict the charges from where their positions are in the periodic table. If you're not sure how to do that, I'll link to a video that shows you how down below. And magnesium has a two plus charge and oxygen has a two minus charge. And that means we're gonna get out MgO. That's a balanced uh, charge. Okay, so all we do in a combustion reaction is combine things with oxygen. And that gives us a different set of products. Unfortunately, with this chart, you basically just have to memorize it, uh, but there's really only four products, so it's not too bad. Let's do longer examples now where we actually balance our final reaction. So this problem, problem tells us to predict the products of molecular oxygen reacting with C2H4, that's ethene, as it, it turns out. And we wanna balance that chemical reaction. So let's write down this reaction. Well. We're taking C2H4, which would be gaseous by the way, and combining that with O2 gas. That's a combustion reaction. What are our products gonna be? 
Well, again, this is the most important example of combustion reaction, combusting a hydrocarbon. And we always get out from the hydrogen, water, and from the carbon, CO2. So this is going to give us out water in the gas state plus CO2 in the gas state. So we're through step one. We just wrote down the products from our chart. Now we need to balance the chemical reaction. Well, here it's helpful to go ahead and start with the carbon. And since we have two carbons in our ethene on the left-hand side, we'll put a two there. That's gonna give us two carbons on both sides. Since we have four hydrogens in our ethene, that means we're gonna need four hydrogens over here. Finally, let's balance the oxygens. There's two oxygens from our water and four oxygens from our carbon dioxide. So that means we need three units of O2 to balance it. If that balancing was too quick for you, check out my balancing chemical reactions video, which I'll also link to below. And that'll go through in more details and more slowly how to balance a chemical reaction. So that's it, that's our final reaction. So now you know how to predict what happens when you combine something with oxygen. Let's do another problem. Here, we wanna combine oxygen and aluminum. And we wanna balance that chemical reaction. So aluminum's a metal, so it's gonna be solid. And we're gonna add that to oxygen, which is gonna be a gas. And we know we get out the metal oxide. Remember, a metal oxide is just the metal and oxygen crammed together. So our metal's aluminum and our oxygen's shockingly oxygen. Uh, and so we're going to get out aluminum and oxygen as our products. Here's where it's important to pay attention to step one. Uh, step one says write down products from the table, and it says balance the charge for the metal oxides. So this will look a lot like balancing the charge for an acid-base reaction, where we write down the sort of generic elements we know are involved and then balance the charge. So we know this is going to produce something with aluminum and something with oxygen. Let's balance those charges now. What's the charge on aluminum? Well, if we look on our periodic table, we'll see that it's 3+. plus. And if we look at the periodic table for oxygen, we'll get two minus. And now we just cross those over to balance them and we get Al2O3. Notice that the aluminum now contributes a total of plus six charge and the oxygen contributes a total of minus six charge. So they're, they're neutral, they're balanced. I erased my aluminum oxide. Let's rewrite it, Al2O3. Okay, so we're through step one. We know we get out aluminum oxide, Al2O3, but now we need to balance our chemical reaction. Here, it's useful to note that our oxygen, O2, on the left side is an even number. Our oxygen on the right side is an odd number. We're never going to balance those unless we make them both even. So how can I make Al2O3 have an even number of oxygens? Well, by multiplying it by 2. So that's what I'm going to start with. Multiplying it by 2, that gives me 6 total oxygens in my Al2O3. And that means that I need 3 O2s to get that same 6 oxygens. Also, I have two Al2, that means I have four total aluminums. Again, if that balancing was too quick for you, go check out that balancing chemical reactions video. Okay, so thanks for watching this episode of Real Chemistry where we've learned how to predict the products for combustion reactions. All we're doing is we're cramming molecular oxygen, that is O2, onto something, whether it's sulfur, hydrogen, carbon, or some metal. And that product will be water for any time we do that with hydrogen, CO2 for carbon, SO2 for sulfur, and a metal oxide whenever we mix it with metal. If you have any questions, please ask them below. You can also visit my channel uh, to subscribe and see other chemistry videos. Thanks for watching.